Uh, well, I will go ahead and kick us off then. My name is Kathy Young. I am the Director of University Relations for the American Heart Association, and I lead our National Internship Program. And um, we're excited to you know, tell you all about our internships as well as um, our HeartCore positions that we have, which HeartCore is our Public Health AmeriCorps Service Program, and you'll learn more about those opportunities later. But first, I just wanted to share a little bit about who the American Heart Association is. So, you know, we are a relentless force for a world of longer, healthier lives. We're dedicated to ensuring equitable health in all communities. Through collaboration with numerous organizations and powered by millions of volunteers, we fund innovative research, we advocate for the public's health, and we share life-saving resources. And, you know, it's a big deal right now because we have a pretty big birthday this year. So we're turning 100, and we are moving forward into the second century with bold hearts to continue to improve the health of Americans in many ways. So we're the nation's leader in CPR education and training, we provide science-based treatment guidelines for healthcare professionals to help them give quality care to their patients. Other things that we do, uh, we educate lawmakers, policymakers, and the public as we advocate for changes to protect and improve the health of our communities. We also work with diverse partners from many sectors to build a culture of health for all. And you know, over our hundred years, we have invested more than five billion, yes, that's billion with a B, in research thanks to the generosity of our donors and supporters. Believe it or not, we have funded 13 Nobel Prize winners and many life-saving uh, research advances, such as the first artificial heart valve, cholesterol-lowering drugs, heart transplantation, and of course, CPR techniques. And even with all of this progress, Heart disease is still the number one killer in the US and worldwide. Stroke is the leading cause of disability and the number five killer in the US, and it's the number two killer globally. So we still have more to do, and that's why we need you. We're hoping that you will join us as we move into our second century to help us with our work. And we have, um, you know, one of the ways that the American Heart Association, we really define our job. It's pretty easy. Our mission statement really says it all to be a relentless force of a world of longer, healthier lives. And, you know, basically what that boils down to is we save and improve lives, right? That's our job. Um, and there's a lot more to it, though, than that. But everything we do is grounded in our guiding values that you see here on the screen. My favorite one is meeting people where they are. I love that we do that in the public, whether we're, you know, doing CPR, trying to, to get culturally, uh, you know, appropriate items out for, for health care um, and, and, and community health programs, um, but also internally for our staff. We meet people where they are to make sure that, that our staff is supported in the way they need. And then how we do our work as a catalyst to maximize health impact is defined in our strategic value proposition that you see there. So that's a little bit about us. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about our program, which we call the Interns of Impact. So through this program, we have a job for you. If you are on this webinar, chances are we have an internship opportunity um, because we have our internships go across the organization. So that means they're part of our operations, whether there's HR opportunities, marketing, communication, finance, or fundraising. Put a one in the chat, put a one in the chat, if back in the day in elementary school, you did a program called Jump Rope for Heart. Let me see, one, oh, look at that, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay. So you guys have been on the journey with the American Heart Association as a volunteer and supporting us since elementary school. Now, wouldn't it be cool if you got an internship in our school-based fundraising, helping to lead that activity for others at their school. Or maybe you want to help with our CPR programs. Um, maybe you're you know, a cure for community health and you're looking at um, you know, supporting in the local markets that way and, and helping to educate the public. Or um, you're about advocacy and policy. We have a role for you. Um, we also have you know, science and research with 
data science and other positions. So you can see there's really um, a lot of room for everybody to join us. Now, I'm also excited that you all are here because we have a lot of opportunities for you right now. So they're um, on the way up page and you can find um, the link will be coming through in the chat um, to see our jobs listed on way up or you can go to heart.job slash interns and you can see the summer internships that we have available now. We're gonna continue to post those um, throughout the rest of this month, maybe over the next couple of weeks. So only some of them are available right now. So if you don't see something that's quite what you want, stick with us and check back because we will have more opportunities to post there. Um, and if the summer isn't the right timing for you and you just wanna kind of learn, we will have fall and spring opportunities as well. So we do internships each season um, and you can find our fall jobs will start to post in June. So what does one get? with an internship at the American Heart Association? Well, all of our internships are part-time. So even during the summer, they are part-time internships and we pay a salary of $23 an hour. We offer both hybrid positions where you, know, you need to be based in Tempe, Arizona for some of them um, to do the work. Others are fully remote. Uh, so we have both opportunities available. We also offer quite a bit of professional development on topics to help you as you're moving forward in your career. We talk about personal brand as you're entering the workforce, um, also things like executive presence. We also, as, as the Heart Association is working to meet people where they are, we're doing a lot internally to educate ourselves on structural racism and how um, structural racism has put up barriers to healthcare. And so we talk about that in the internship, but also from a sense of microaggressions and how you know employees, how, how people starting early career uh, can navigate microaggressions in their career. So we try to empower you with a lot of tools, give you a lot to think about as you are starting off your career. Uh, we also offer nationwide networking with other interns, but we also connect you with alumni that are here from your school. So you can see a broader picture of the organization and just really practice that networking skill. We also have a very special thing called Heart U which is our internal university, it's our education platform. And it's a state-of-the-art um, you know, training as state-of-the-art training courses. And you have access to that the entire time that you are here. You can work on things like public speaking, um, lots of different skills through that. Okay, but enough from me. You can hear from me all day. I'm gonna bring in our panel. So we have some special guests with us today, um, some former interns, as well as managers. So if you all could come on, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm excited to have Kristen and Olivia as former interns with us and Aaron and Gino. And I would like, like to just start with introductions from everybody. So let's go with our former interns first. Uh, so Kristen, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your position? Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending. I am Kristen Lawrence. I serve as the Community Impact Director for the Birmingham Metro slash North Alabama region for the American Heart Association. Um, and I came from the Intern of Impact Program, and I also am a former member of the HBCU Scholars Program. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Olivia. Um, I was came on as an intern of impact in the live department. Um, and then I recently in December got hired on as a digital fundraising manager. And uh, it's definitely fun. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. And then we have some managers that you can learn from today, too. So, Aaron, I'll start with you. Hi, everyone. I'm Aaron Thomas. I'm the marketing communications director for the American Heart Association here in Metro Atlanta. Hey everyone, I'm Gino. I'm based in the Pittsburgh area. I started in the Pittsburgh office uh, just um, about three years ago, actually, and I now work um, as a program manager on our quality team at a national center. Wonderful. Awesome. So I just want to give everybody some perspective. You know, we always get questions. Um, people want to hear, obviously, from the interns about what the experience was like, but you know, ultimately, everybody on here wants to know how to get that job. How do they get that intern? So, you know, internship. So we're looking for the inside story from those managers. But I'd like to start with the interns first. And, you know, maybe, Olivia, if you can just start and tell me, you know, tell everybody a little bit about your experience as an intern, maybe, you know, a favorite, a favorite thing or something like that. Yeah. So I've worked a lot of jobs in my undergrad, um, a lot of jobs. <laughs> 
And every single interview, I always asked, you know, what what makes up your culture? What makes you special? And a lot of them always said, oh, we're inclusive, we're supportive. And a lot of times that didn't pan out. And when I got into uh, my interview with Heather Jackson, who's on the call here, um, I asked, you know, what makes the AHA culture? And she said, determined and supportive. And so my favorite thing throughout my internship and now my full-time role has been how supportive everyone is because what they said came to fruition. It was actually true. This is one of the most supportive environments I've ever been in. And so that's definitely one of my favorite things about being here. I love that. Kristen, what about for you? How was your internship experience? Oh, definitely what Olivia said, um, inclusive and supportive what blew my mind it absolutely blew my mind but um even just you know when you think of interns you know sometimes you're like oh you know we're, they're associated with coffee runners or you know the task doers however you know my manager entrusted me with you know spearheading one of our you know large projects which was actually you know one of my passion projects and it was our libraries with heart program um and so you know we um we established a self-measured blood pressure cuff loaner program with, you know, the local libraries in our area so that, you know, patrons of the library could, you know, just be vigilant in their numbers, you know, and if they did notice they were pre or hypertensive, they were um, referred to a federally qualified health center. So, you know, regardless of insurance, they were served, but, you know, just being entrusted with that, you know, I was included, um, my inputs and my opinions were valued. And um, like, like I said, just even down to the inclusivity and trying to address, um, you know, things such as microaggressions, microaggressions in the workplace and even just in the world. But yes. Awesome. Thanks. All right, managers, going to put you on the hot seat here. How, how are we getting jobs? So, you know, you both come from different worlds, right? Marketing and then, and then quality, um, you know, some in the field, right? And some, you know, at, at National Center where it's a little bit more remote opportunities. So, you know, would love to hear from you all, you know, what skills or qualities do you really look for, you know, in an intern as you're hiring, um, whoever wants to start? Well, um, for me, particularly in marketing and communications, one of the things that's important is I'm looking for, someone who has experience managing social media, because that's a big part of the job here with for this role. And also someone who's at, who has experience to communicating through writing of any sort. Um, now there is a proponent of media relations that goes along with this role, but that's a skill that I'm expecting you to learn while you're here. Um, but as long as you're able to communicate effectively that you can write, you can speak very well, because that's a part of this role too. And also being engaged digitally from social media, you know, maybe experiencing Canva, things of that nature. And some soft skills are things that are not necessarily technical that I'm looking for. Someone who's confident, um, someone who is willing to talk about their experience of being collaborative. Because in this role, you have to work with different departments, different entities, other markets. So someone who's collaborative and also someone who's a leader that is willing to get it done. So having confidence in their work and expressing the fact that, you know, whatever I have to do to get it done, that's really important because ultimately we say this in our mission, you have to be relentless in this role uh, because there is a lot that comes with it and a lot for you to learn. And then last is someone who's just inquisitive, like not afraid to ask questions. Um, someone who is coachable in a sense as well. I think Aaron said it all. I don't have to know. Um, it's I can could not agree more, Aaron. Um, in something that I you know experienced starting in the Pittsburgh office and then now managing interns um, out of our quality office, you're absolutely right. And Emot self motivators, um, people who are not afraid to kind of get their hands dirty, right, and then ask the questions to make sure that we have a framework for success. Um, something that I saw on a uh, on someone's resume one time was ability to make real time decisions. And I thought that was such an interesting piece. And um, because so often, you know, at AHA, um, we bring our interns on and, and, you know, we're not running coffee, right? We're actually working on national programs. And, you know, you're the functional program manager on, you know, something that's going to impact the American Heart Association, but also impact all of the people that the association touches, right, in our communities. And so um, somebody who is really aligned with that vision and values of the association is are, are really awesome attributes. And I, I think the technical skills are a great component, right? Um, it's a 
each job is different, right? Any internship you apply for. And so I think the people that spend the time looking into their resumes and really tailoring those to those positions that they're applying for is important. But I could not agree more. Those qualitative pieces of, of you know, seeing that on resumes, um, meeting people where they are, you know, compassionate, determined, confident, all of those pieces that come out um, is, is really awesome to see. So that would be what I would add to Aaron's well-articulated response. Awesome. And I love that. And I love that, you know, for for managers, right, experience comes in many forms. So it, it, it might be, right, like Olivia said, she had a bunch of work experience that, that she had been doing. But in some cases, you can get leadership and you can show, um, you know, maybe you were the marketing manager in your club, right? And you had to manage a social media account or there, there's other ways to show that experience through projects, right, through a lot of different things. And so um, so I love those examples you gave, and I want people to think about on their resume, which we have tips and tricks from recruiters coming up later, y'all. Um, but, you know, think about how you can bring all of your experiences, um, you know, into your resume. All right, back to the interns now. So what advice would you give to folks, you know, kind of to make the most out of their internship, you know, to as they're starting out? Um, Kristen, maybe we'll start with you this time. Sure. Um one thing that I definitely um, made sure to do during my internship, which is what led me to my permanent position, was always asking questions, um, trying to go above and beyond. You know, there's always things to you know improve upon. There's always work to be done. Um, so just really figuring out, you know, of course, you know what all needed to be done, and then also you know tying my own passions um, and missions into that um, because you know you can't just you know get the job done and then expect you know, do the bare minimum and then expect people to you know seek you out it's like okay you know you have to take that extra step and even things such as challenging your perspective you know cuz um you know one of our missions is meeting people where they are so you have to you know step outside of your mindset and really um just challenge yourself and think, okay, you know, what would be a way to improve this program? Um, you know, how can we better reach, you know, this target audience um, through Mark, um, Mark Combs, like uh, with Aaron. So, you know, just trying to really, you know, go, like go above and beyond, go that extra mile, you know, always make your impression, um, make your mark in the world. Yeah. Awesome. Olivia, what about for you? What advice do you have? My advice would be to forget the idea that you're just an intern in most cases because you bring so many new ideas to the organization and new ways to go about things that maybe other people who have been in, for example, in my role, some people have been in fundraising for 25 years. So they don't have the eyes that someone who just graduated college would have. So bring those innovative ideas. Don't sell yourself short just because I'm an intern. But do you remember that you're an intern when you're afraid of failure? Internships are designed for you to grow. You don't have the weight of the world. You are expected to learn. You're not expected to be perfect. Don't be afraid of failure. So in that one case, remember that you're just an intern. You don't have the weight of the world. But in other cases, go for it. And to Kristen's point, push yourself harder. Like push yourself, go absolutely, you know, off the walls, have fun with it and maximize your time with it. Awesome. Love that. All right, Aaron and Gino, top tip, give me quickly, top interview tip for interns. Gino, you have to go first this time because Aaron, Aaron went out of the line last time. So. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I put me on the spot there. I think the best tip I can say is just to breathe that we want to see people succeed and that when you're getting to that interview, we are already on your side, even though it seems like we're sitting, you know, at the other side of the table, right, or at the other side of the computer. Um, I even in, you know, applying to my current role, right? Uh, take a second, breathe, give a smile. Um, we're all in it together. So that would be the best advice I could give. Yeah, my biggest tip would just be to be thoughtful in your answers. Um, so it's okay to pause to Gino's point, breathe. It's okay to pause before you speak. And also just let your strengths shine. Don't worry about what you can't do um, or things that you may not have been exposed to. Really focus on the things that you're good at. So, you know, you may not have a whole lot of experience in social media, but you're an excellent writer. So lean into that. And that's what you want to talk about and focus on while you're being interviewed. Awesome. All right. And remember, more tips and tricks coming up from our recruiters. 
but I want to thank our panel today on speaking about our internship program. Thank you all for your time and your thoughts. Appreciate it. And now I'm going to um, turn it over to, I've got to share my screen again here. I can't do both at the same time, apparently. I'm going to turn it over to Kayla, who's going to talk to you about the HeartCore program. Kayla, welcome. Thank you. And it's so exciting that you all are in this position where you're deciding what you want to do with your career next. And I, again, the intern possibility is so great and robust for the AHA, but I'm excited to tell you about another initiative that we have going on at the HeartCore or at that AHA called HeartCore. So essentially, uh, well, before I get started, my name is Kayla Nock. I am the National Program Manager of the HeartCore Initiative here at the American Heart Association. And similar to you all, several years ago, I was in that position of where do I want my next step to be in public health? I know I love uh, I love public health. I want to get involved in the community. What's my next step? And being a part of this conversation today is so exciting. Um, so with that, uh, Kathy, if you don't mind going to the next slide. Wonderful. Okay, so HeartCore was really developed to drive health equity in rural areas. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows this, but under-resourced communities and those living in rural communities face the highest rate of hypertension. Making matters worse, rural communities face a shortage of healthcare professionals, including public health workers, and all of this negatively impacts the care of rural residents. HeartCore is an AmeriCorps uh, is an American Heart Association public health uh, AmeriCorps service opportunity. HeartCore is for those that are interested in gaining valuable professional public health experience while advancing more equitable health outcomes for rural communities. HeartCore service members will serve in person and gain real life experience supporting, developing, and implementing programs and preventable education around high blood pressure, nutrition security, and hands only CPR, and also tobacco sensation. Um, this is a very inclusive culture. The program uh, is able to allow is um, is open to all without regard to race, color, national origin, gender, age, religion, sexual orientation, disability, gender identity or expression, political affiliation, maternal or paternal status, or genetic information or military service. We're really looking for individuals for a passion for health equity and an interest in promoting health in rural communities. All educational backgrounds are welcome. College majors that align with, uh, with HeartCore typically um, include health or other sciences, nonprofit, public health, nursing, or well-being. But again, this opportunity is open to all career, career fields that are interested in public health and health, health equity. So what do HeartCore members do? This is a question we get a lot. Uh, essentially, what we placements that are in, uh, we have all of our placements that are in person and on site with either healthcare centers, community-based organizations or CBOs, public health departments or other nonprofit organizations. Uh, member service activities really focus on, um, on the health of high blood pressure, nutrition security, hands-only CPR, and tobacco sensation. And so really a lot of HeartCore members support blood pressure, blood pressure self-monitoring activities. They educate the community on hands-only CPR. They facilitate those blood pressure and tobacco nutrition screenings and referrals to clinical care. They plan and deliver health education or one-on-ones or group activities with, with heart-related health topics, and they help identify and collaborate with local resources and organizations to promote healthy living within a community. Um, so what's really exciting is we are recruiting now. We want you now. So we know that those uh, that are on this call might be graduating in May, and we are recruiting for our summer cohort. What that really looks like for summer 24 is that people will start in May of 2020 or May 20th, and then they will continue their summer roles through August 9th. There's uh, a possibility if you wanted to extend your service, you're more than welcome to stay the more than just the summer, but we know that summer is kind of a transition time for folks to really figure out what they're interested in. Maybe a gap summer of, do I want to go to med school? Do I want to pursue an MPH? What do I want to do with my life afterwards? And sometimes, you know, this is a great opportunity for you to just explore what public health and really being engaged in a community looks like. So we're recruiting now for our summer cohort. If you need a little bit more time to think about it, we also have three to four 
we typically have three to four uh, cohorts a year. So a summer cohort, a fall cohort, and a spring cohort. So there's also possibilities if you're not ready to apply now that you can apply later, but it's a great opportunity for you on this call to learn more about it um, after this call. And then in terms of um, what Heartcore really looks like. So because Heartcore, you wouldn't be a full-time employee with the American Heart Association, you would get your benefits in what we call stipends. So it's still a full-time position. So Heartcore members would be serving 40 hours per week, whether that's a summer or a spring position or a fall position. And you would receive bi-weekly living stipends of $1,108.70. Um, taxes will be deducted out of that. But you do, you uh, being a Harcourt member means that you do get an education award at the end of your service. Depending on how long you serve with us, that education award can vary between $4,000 and $6,000 for student loans or for any sort, any sort of current college costs that you have too. So you get the, the public health experience of being an AmeriCorps member, but you also get that education award, which is really lucrative for a lot of uh, recent college graduates as well. Um, you also will get health care benefits. Um, if you have any children, you would get a child care subsidy, subsidy if you're eligible. Um, and then you also get that professional development from the American Heart Association. We're constantly giving you trainings and up-to-date information on how to best uh, deliver care to patients in the community. So really, you're getting that, that hands-on experience and that in-depth uh, perspective of what public health looks like. Um, and we are located all, almost throughout the whole country. We're at, right now at 36 states. Um, so right here on your screen, you'll get to see all the communities that we get to serve uh, and where our Heartcore members are currently serving. Uh, we are looking to expand, but we really want to make sure that, uh, you know, if you're in any of these areas and you want to be a part of Heartcore, uh, this is kind of where we're looking at. Um, but what's great about Heartcore as well is we have a wide network of our alumni, not only Heartcore members, but our AmeriCorps uh, alumni as well. So being a part of Heartcore means that you get to engage with alumni, you get to participate in local public health conversations, you get to network with a lot of folks. Uh, so we're really excited that we've developed uh, and contributed to this wide network. Um, but with that, now I'd love to turn it over to Deanna Lyons, our national HR director, and introduce some of our Heartcore panelists um, so you can really hear from their experience, our current members, uh, what they've been really working on and what they're really excited about. So maybe uh, you also will want to become a Heartcore member. So with that, Deanna, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thanks very much, Kayla. I'm happy to uh, introduce our panel as well. It's a mixture of our current Heartcore members as well as uh, several Heartcore supervisors. Uh, we'll take a moment to let them introduce themselves first um, and tell us a little bit about uh, their background and sort of uh, experience. So we'll start with Basil. So Basil, if you can just introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Basil Heinzman. Um, I'm an AmeriCorps HeartCorps service member serving with Story County Public Health in Ames, Iowa. Um, I'm currently in my gap year before medical school, so I just graduated in May and I'll be going to medical school in the fall. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work with uh, the rural communities in Story County with helping to improve nutrition security and cardiac health and education. Terrific. And then Shandine, if you'll introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Shondine Hawthorne, and I am a HeartCorps service member working out of the McKinley County Navajo Nation and soon um, Pueblo of Zuni uh, reservations. And so what I'm doing is I'm just supporting um, heart health uh, ways um, people can make themselves healthier and especially setting up um, self-monitoring blood pressure initiatives throughout the community. And so a little bit of my background is um, I'm kind of a versatile person. I have a um, background in the medical field as a CNA. I also um, am a heavy equipment operator in the construction field. And I've worked like office jobs, you know, bank teller, um, collector, and so on. So, um, but Joining Heartcore was really rewarding for me. Thank you. Thanks, Dean. And then uh, Cheryl, if you want to introduce yourself, these are Cheryl and Tim who are next are our Heartcore supervisors. 
Yes. So um, my name is Cheryl Wilkinson. I am the Community Impact Director for American Heart Association for the state of New Mexico. And I have the wonderful opportunity to support um, Sean Dean and all of the amazing work that she is doing in the community. Um, so at this time, I just want to say a little plug there to Sean Dean. I knew everything to I didn't know the heavy operator. So you find something new every time. But um, Heartcore is a wonderful opportunity for those people that are wanting to have a passion to serve their community and are looking to transition or kind of um, so it's it's open to all people in all phases of their career. So um, well, you're you're all are welcome. So thank you. Great. Thanks. And Tim. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Nicolai. I'm the Senior Rural Health Director for the American Heart Association in the Midwest region. And part of that role means I get to work with Basil and uh, another dozen or so HeartCore members across the Midwest. Um, I've been with the association for 16 years, and I think this is my fifth or sixth role, depending on how you count. I started off as an administrative assistant and moved on from there. So definitely, you know, whatever opportunities you're considering right now, that's probably your first opportunity with the Heart Association, and who knows where the next decade or so could take you from there. That's terrific. So thanks, Tim. So let's uh, hear first from our, our HeartCore service members. So Basil, I'll go to you first. So um, knowing that you've been in the program uh, since September of this past year, what skills have you found that you've developed in your role? Yeah, um, so I would say some of the skills I've developed is a lot of like analysis. So um, the hardcore role, you get placed with a host site and then you have a work agenda that they give you. But, you know, for me, my work, my work plan was like, I need to increase nutrition security in Story County. So that meant I had to figure out, okay, so where in Story County is the need the highest? What is causing these barriers to nutrition security? Who can I talk to to learn more? Or like, who would I be able to recruit to help me? And so a lot of like problem solving and a lot of like figuring out creative ways around like, oh, I don't have any data at like the city level. So maybe I could search by census track, lots of stuff like that. Um, I would say also um, I've had a really, a much greater awareness of public health resources and the ways in which public health entities can interact with each other, which is really useful um, no matter what your career path is. But specifically in HeartCore, it's great because I can refer community members to resources that already exist. You know, I'm only one HeartCore service member. I can't fix every problem in Story County. But, you know, it's really great because A, the AHA has tons, tons of resources that can help community members in all sorts of ways, like exercise information, diet information, you know, blood pressure information, all these different things. But then also like a uh, greater awareness of different community partners. And uh, they're honestly usually really, really willing to work with hardcore members because, you know, they recognize the AHA and they're like, oh yeah, we want to do good. You want to do good. Let's talk. Great. Thanks. And then, Sean, you know, same question to you. What skills have you developed? And I know you're in a unique position, too, that you actually started last year. So this is your second year. So you've really been able to see the progress uh, within the communities you serve. OK, yeah. So um, this is my second year of the HeartCore initiative. And uh, what I've learned and really um, utilize is um, how to be able to network and collaborate with the public health officials as well as the community um, just to get hardcore out in the community. Um, and it was just by supporting, you know, other organization blood pressure blood pressure initiatives and just getting out to the health and wellness fairs and just interacting with the community to where you can build trust um, through word of mouth. So that's what I've learned. Terrific. Thank you. And then, you know, Cheryl, I know you uh, supervise, um, you know, Sean Dean, as well as some other uh, hardcore members. What skills in particular do you find that you look for, maybe name the top two and why? Do you look for those in a hardcore candidate? Oh, gosh, that's a hard one um, to, to really pin down because there's not one. Like I would say, I, I think um, I think, um, well, one, the ability to um, problem solve and critically think and and it is is really there's, you know, these areas that the hardcore serves are rural uh, um, under, you know, resource communities. They have poor health outcomes. 
So they have a lot of challenges already. So it's not like, you know, oh yeah, come and, and join us, um, you know, and, and it's gonna be really easy. You really have to have a passion for wanting to be a part of that community and not, not um, I guess, take no or not, once you hit the first speed bump, then that's it. Um, if it, you know, definitely um, Shandine's perseverance and her love of her community really um, created um, a win, a winning situation that we could have really just ended it there because of some of the challenges that we had with the lack of um, infrastructure in the community, the lack of internet, broadband, uh, space, and things like that. So her perseverance and love of her community. Um, you know, really worked well, worked well. So I think it has to be a love of the community and an ability to really um, want to to serve and kind of have that servant leadership um, mentality is really, really strong. And, you know, New Mexico is a big state, has lots of different things. So in another community, there are other, you know, skills that we may be looking for, but ultimately at the core, really wanting to serve and understanding, you know, that the communities already have challenges and we're there to problem solve and be help be a, res, a solution right. and help them help themselves as well. So terrific. Thanks. And and then Tim, what advice you you uh, supervise a number of members, what advice do you have for someone who's considering, you know, applying and serving with Hardcore? Yeah, I think the first thing I would say is Kayla kind of rattled off a few majors or, or study areas that are prevalent among our hardcore members. But even if you're not in one of those buckets, don't don't preclude yourself from being interested in hardcore. I think as I look at our members, they're at all different stages of their education and all different backgrounds and have future different future career goals. Um, so if if you have that servant leadership mindset that Cheryl just mentioned, and you want to connect with others in the community and really make a difference, give it a try. Um, you know, send your resume in and, and take a look at where Hardcore might be in your state. Um, and we'll we'll do what we can to make that a supportive environment for, for everybody. Great. And then wanting to hear from our members last, uh, Basil and then Shandine, if you could, you know, share maybe one uh, opportunity that you were exposed to that you, you know, really helped you in, in your sort of career goals? Yeah. Um, so for me, I think one opportunity that's really helped me is, um, so as I said, I've been working to improve um, like nutrition security in Story County. And so through that, through those efforts, I've been partnering a lot with our WIC, Women, Infants, Children, and SNAP, like food assistance program offices. And so uh, a lot of the times, like, um, as I mentioned, I'm going to medical school and um, I'm interested in primary care. And so figuring out ways that I, as, as a future physician, can facilitate connections between like WIC and SNAP and other nutrition assistance providers has been really valuable because at the end of the day, you know, only about 20% of patient outcomes are due to clinical care. The other 80% is those social determinants of health, those socioeconomic factors. And so like, that's one of the things I really love about Heartcore is because, you know, it gives me these sorts of opportunities where I can reach that other 80% of health outcomes and I can really make an even bigger difference. And it's like, again, I'm one person. So figuring out those connections, figuring out those resources and being aware, like as, as a physician, I should be reaching out to these WIC people. I should be like aware of what they can offer in my specific community. I think that's just been really wonderful and it's opened doors for me already. Oh, great. Thank you. And how about for you, Shandine? Um, the activities and the, the opportunities is just um, getting out in the community, which I love to do. And you actually find out the community, you know, what their health and like their weaknesses and strengths are. And so it's just um, being out in the community, whether you're talking to physicians in the community by running into them, you know, the grocery stores or whatever. And it's just taking a little bit from everyone is how you learn and that just how important public health is to the community. And it's just taking the initiative for people to be proactive so we can help one another help ourselves. Super. Thank, thank you. And thank you very much, Tim. 
and Basil and Shandine and Cheryl for sharing this information with us. And I think I turn it over to Heather, I believe. We are going to talk about what it's what what will get you hired. So tips and tricks um, to get you hired today. We're just going to focus. Deanna and I are going to share some tips with you. We're just going to focus on your resume as well as a couple interview tips. So Kathy, could you pull up the slide, please? So um, what I'm going to share, I'm also going to give you a visual example. You heard earlier from Olivia Johnson. They are now um, a full-time employee with us. And so I thought using their uh, resume would be a good way for you to see exactly what we're sharing. So a lot of people want to know what should they put on the resume. So it's really important to, re to be brief, have bullet points, and use action words. So if you look closely, she put the most relevant job to the job. She put her most relevant experience to the job that she was applying to first, and she had action items. So she created over 100 new streamer profiles. She contacted and interact with hundreds of streamers. Those bullet points that she listed there are directly related to the position that she now holds. Again, with the head of events esports, that also had action items that related to the job that she received. So an increase of in attendance by 100% within the first year of work. That's a tangible, actionable item that she put on that resume. And then the third example, she has student marketer. So that one uh, required a little bit more of creative thinking. How can I put this job that I had and have it relate to the job that I'm looking for? So she talked about traveling across Dallas Fort Worth area to find and develop new sales leads. Well, she's in fundraising. So that that experience that she had directly related to the, the job that she was looking for. Another thing that she said was she had a lot of jobs during undergrad. And so if you notice here, she only has three jobs listed. And if you go down a little bit more, you'll see that she has some projects. So she didn't put every single thing that she has done on the resume she focused on what is applicable to the job. So what does that mean for you? So when you are looking at any job description, hone in on the responsibilities and the qualifications. The responsibilities are the most important that you need to remember for your resume because you want to take those responsibilities and reflect on your resume, how you're going to be able to do that. And also with the qualifications, we found that especially women, um, are not applying to positions if they don't meet all the qualifications. Don't be scared of applying to a position because you think you don't make all of meet all of the qualifications. You still could be a wonderful candidate for the role, so don't hinder yourself. But just keep that in mind for when you're uh, interviewing for the position. And you might wonder, okay, so that's great, Heather, but what if I don't have a lot of job experience? Don't worry, we are not looking for you to have a lot of paid job experience in order to be a wonderful intern with our organization. We just want to know that you have a high interest in the area that you're looking to do. You have some coursework in that area, as well as what is really good is some volunteer experience. So that volunteer experience could be some campus work that you've done that relates to the internship that you're looking for. Um, it could be an outside volunteer organization that you've done some work for uh, regarding whatever it is that you're interested in. So those are just a couple tips I have, and now Dehan is going to share a couple. Great. Thanks. And if you can switch to the other resume. Oh, we just have the, the one. Oh, right. just the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Because um, what I uh, was going to share um, there you know, in terms of thinking about what does your, how does your resume present to you? So, um, you know, where it has the action items that there, if your resume, you know, had said, um, you know, I follow up on activities when asked, but at the same time, you are describing yourself as um, taking initiative, there's going to be some, some mismatch there in terms of how you have yourself described in your, you know, in your resume, and then how your resume looks as well. So when, also when Heather was talking about putting your most current positions first, you want to bring up your resume, you know, and make sure that it's uh, current, and that the positions that you have listed, it includes particularly your most current position, that's uh, 
really an important factor because it gives you an idea of what the individual you are doing at this moment. So if your resume, you know, stopped at January 2023 and it's now February 2024, looking at your resume, I'm going to think that is the last position, whether it was a volunteer position, a paid position, I'm going to think based on what I'm seeing that that was your most recent position. And so again, you want to make sure that you are presenting yourself as current and as full a picture as, as it is right now for you. Um, so you want to have that as well. And then you're know, also talking on what Heather was saying about uh, action items. You also want your resume to uh, showcase your accomplishments. So where it says created over 100 new streamer profiles within a four week period, that shows your accomplishment. If it just said, um, I'm responsible for streamer profiles, that doesn't tell me if you were successful with your streamer profiles. It doesn't tell me you weren't successful. It really doesn't tell me much about you specifically other than a task that you had while in that role. So really take advantage of highlighting those actions, but also what those accomplishments are that are tied directly back to you when thinking about that. You, you also um, want to make sure when you're putting your resume together, look at the posting that you're looking at and find ways that you can, you know, factually, honestly, um, incorporate those skill sets or that experience that they're looking for using those words in your resume. Because we're, those are the words that we're, you know, experiences we're looking for, those action items. So um, if it says, you know, sh looking for people who have created, um, you know, different things, use the word created in your resume. Um, also, you know, look at um, does your resume line up with uh, what the posting is saying? So if it, the posting is hybrid, um, and I'll give you a little tip here. So our applicant tracking system has a way to be able to share with us, and I don't think this is, it may not be new to you, where someone is in relation to the position. Because we know a lot of resumes, you know, will put in their phone number, LinkedIn profile, but you don't see addresses like what used to be common way back when. So if you're saying you, and the position is in person, and, you know, you're saying that you're, um, not able to relocate and yet the position you're applying for is you know 200 miles away it's good to be able to include that somewhere on your resume you know as because otherwise my question is going to be okay if you're telling me you're not able to relocate and yet you appear to be on the other side of the country you know whether it's through your you know where your current positions have been Help me understand a little bit sort of why you're applying then to this position because I'm I'm going to be confused. So um, you can put that in your your uh, cover letter if you include one. Not a lot, you know, not an expectation like it used to be. Or you can put it in your resume somewhere off to the side. Um, but that's helpful as well. So now we're going to move to a few um, questions that we hear a lot of intern candidates ask. Um, when it comes to interviews, they're just questions that they're asked in an interview setting that seem a little tough and not really clear on where they should go with it. Um, that first question is, when somebody asks you, what are your strengths or how would others describe yourself? They're asking you a question that is going to relate to the job duties. So they're not really wanting to hear, oh, I have a lot of friends. I like people. Um, they really want to hear something along the lines of, I believe in being inclusive and collaborative with people. For with a variety of different ways of thought and backgrounds. So when you're thinking about how you would answer that, think about it in terms of what are they looking for in a job and versus just sharing what you think um, is great about you, but that's wonderful that there's many great things about you. Um, another trick question that I absolutely hate that still gets asked is what is your biggest weakness? I don't like this outdated question. Um, I think it encourages you to lie because who's going to say really like their biggest weakness in an interview for a job that they want? Um, but if you are asked that question, a safe answer is I struggle with saying no or I struggle with perfectionism. 
Um, you can't go wrong with those answers. And a lot of us do struggle with perfectionism or we do feel afraid to say no. So it, if that's the case for you, it's not as if you're lying. Um, and then Deanne, I think we, uh, Kathy wanted to just go in and talk about our individual hiring processes for the rest of the time. Um, so we wanted to give you an idea of what it's like to get hired as an intern with the American Heart Association through the Intern of Impact program. And then Deanna will share how the hiring process for the HeartCore program. So uh, after we post the jobs, so we have jobs posted, we have a little over 20 jobs posted right now. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll continue to post the rest of our internship positions. So first, after we review your resume, we'll invite you to do a brief video interview with uh, four different questions. And then based on that interview, we will invite you to have a phone screen interview with the recruiter. Um, after that, you'll have one interview with the hiring manager. On occasion, they might bring in another team member that you would be working closely with, but that would be your final interview. And those interviews usually include the top three candidates and they're usually done within the week. So that means the hiring decision is made within the week uh, or the week that follows and you would know. So a few weeks, after the position for you, let's say you apply to a position that's posted today, in a couple of weeks, you could expect an invite to a video interview. Um, and then again, you would go through that process. So if you went through that process, we're invited to that video interview in a couple of weeks from now, that hiring decision is gonna be anticipated for that third week of April at the latest. So hopefully that gives you a good picture of start to finish. We do have a lot of applicants that apply, and so we just try to get through them and give each individual their due by reviewing their resume to see if they're a good fit for the role. Deanna, did you wanna share your process? Sure, so for our heart core positions, it is a little different. So we, you know, uh, when we see resumes that look like they have the potential for fit, both in terms of location and interest uh, related to, to public health, but again, you don't have to have a public health background. Um, we then reach out to those individuals, typically by email. So if you, you know, what email address you put on your resume, make sure it's one that you actually check because we will email you and we will then schedule about a 30 minute phone interview. And so that's an interview with uh, myself or our other recruiter, Lisa Marshall, and we'll, you know, have that initial phone screen. Then we will share the information um, that we gain from you and both and your resume with the field supervisor. So that's an AHA staff member who will also manage this position. Um, and from there, if it looks like a fit, we'll invite that candidate to have an in-person interview with the host site. So again, our members don't serve at AHA offices. They serve at a a clinic, a hospital, a boys and girls club, a nonprofit organization in that rural community. And so they'll have a chance to meet with that supervisor and also see the organization, get a feel for it. Uh, from there, we will identify you know, a finalist candidate and we will extend a conditional offer and then we'll you know, go through the process that goes after that. So from start to finish, um, it can take about three to four weeks to, you know, in terms of a conditional offer. And then we, there are background checks that need to take place as well. Um, so that happens after the conditional offer has been extended. So it uh, might be a little bit longer than what an internship interview would be. But again, we want to make sure that um, the candidate has a chance to meet with all those who will be an integral part of their um, placement and their experience with uh, Hardcore. We'll turn it back over to Kathy now. Very good. Excellent. Thank you both for those great tips and tricks. We really appreciate it. And, um, and thank you all for being here today. Um, again, we have internship programs that are internship jobs that are available now, as well as Hardcore jobs. Um, the Way Up link well, you know, you can go to WayUp. That's how you that's how you got here in the first place, probably. So if you have a WayUp account, um, go to the American Heart Association page and, and look at um, what's available to you for internships as well as for HeartCore position. We've also shared direct links um, as well throughout the chat. And so we really appreciate you all being here. I have a cool thank you slide, but I think that I think that we can all move on from that. So. <laughs>
Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.